Hello and welcome to the 21st video in this programming tutorial series on C. Back after a couple of weeks break, as I explained in the previous video, I was away in England and then in Germany, but now back home in Italy and ready to get on with the next few videos. So this is the first of a few videos where we'll be looking at pointers. And pointers are essential objects or things that you need to use in most programs, anything but the simplest of programs really, but are often explained in a really complicated manner when it doesn't need to be complicated at all. The only thing is, is if you don't understand what you're doing, you can end up causing a few problems or bad bugs in your programs. And it's often the easiest way on Windows to achieve a blue screen is by messing up the use of pointers. But without further ado, let's have a look at what we're talking about with pointers. Yeah, I've got a, a main function here should all be familiar what's on this screen, apart from the two lines which are commented out here, which I'll get to in a minute. But I've declared two integer variables, num1 and num2. And at the moment I'm printing the value of each one to the screen. You can ignore the commented out lines for now. If I just compile this program and run it, I get value of num1 is 3 and value of num2 is 6. All is well. So, when the program runs, it declares in its memory space here for the variable called num1 and it declares enough space for an integer because that's the type of num1 and sets its value in that memory block to 3. num2 also gets an integer's worth of space declared for it and its value is stored as 6. Now what we can actually do, not only can we print the value of these variables to the screen but we can also print the addresses that they're stored at the way you do this is you print the address in hexadecimal format and you can use, if you go to c++.com and have a look at the description for the printf function, you'll see that you can use p as a format specifier to get the address of the variable. So here I'm simply printing the address of num1 and to get the address, rather than using num1 on its own, I'm using this ampersand here I think it's called or and sign I like to say but this all this does before when placed before a variable says we're simply saying what is at the address of this variable here so in this case we're saying simply get print or print the location of this variable rather than its value so its location in the memory so if I just save this and run the and compile and run the program again We've got the value of num1 as 3, and now we can see that its address is stored at 28ff1c. We've got the value of num2 is 6, and the address is 28ff18, and the addresses are in hexadecimal. And if you ever see on the screen, sometimes you get fatal errors with programs, or worst case, the blue screen. You'll see that it always says to you in its error message, fatal error occurred at, and it will usually say address, or point, or something like that, and give you a hexadecimal number. And that's simply saying where in the memory the problem occurred. So at 28ff1c is the address of num1 where there is space for an integer and there's a value at this location in the address the value of 3 is stored. OK that should all be pretty clear. And, to, and again just to reiterate to get the address of the variable rather than the value you use this little and sign here. So now let's have a look at a pointer and what we're going to do now is declare a pointer variable of an integer type so just like declaring a variable as in num1 or num2 and we're going to set it to point at the address of num1 so the way you declare a pointer is the type as in a normal integer variable and then you say asterisk now I then like to, in the variable name, always start with a small p for pointers, so I know that they're pointers, and we'll put p to our number. So this declares a variable that is a pointer type, shown by the asterisk here. Its name is p to our number, and now we need to tell it where to point and we're going to tell it to point at the address of num1 and that's all there is to it. This pointer here has been set up it's got an integer type 
So the program simply says this variable p to our number is looking at an integer's worth of memory starting at the location of the address of num1. So what I can now do is I can actually print the value of p to our number. So this all this is doing now is printing the value that's at the location that this variable p to our number is pointing at. And that value should be all being well 3. So if I go over and compile the program and then run it, and you can see that the value of p to our number is 3. What I could then do, for instance, is take p to our number, I don't need the asterisk anymore, and I can now tell it to point instead at the address of num2. And I'll get it to print its value. I'm sure it's pretty easy to guess what's going to happen here. But now p to our number has a value of 6. And now something else I can do. At the moment, num2 has a value of 6. And we'd set our pointer to point at the address of num2. And then we said, print out to the screen what is the value of the integer stored at that address, which, pretty self-explanatory, is 6. What I could do now, though, is take our variable and say, wherever this is pointing, set that value to 10. And now if I go and print out the value again of num2, you'll see that the value, after compiling and running, Oops, I've taken the address, sorry, not the value line. Just save and run that again. And now you can see that the value of num2 was 6 and has now changed to 10. Because we've said here, change at the address of wherever this is pointing, change the integer value there to 10. So you can see that pointers are actually quite simple. All they do is you have to imagine them pointing to the address in memory of another variable. Now in your program, when you're declaring pointers, if you're not declaring the pointer at the start of a function to actually point to any particular address, then you should always declare the value of the pointer as null. Otherwise you get what's called as floating pointers, and they could end up pointing at anything inside the program's memory and you can if you're not careful end up with some very random and nasty bugs in there so if you decided for example in this program not to set the pointer looking anywhere in particular then you would simply type null here rather than just leaving it with a semicolon afterwards for instance without a value so always remember to set your pointers to either null or pointing to a variable you shouldn't ever see the pointer as actually being a variable with its own memory in space itself. It's a variable type of a pointer type, well, of an integer type, but it is a pointer rather than a fixed variable. And what it's doing is looking at an integer size area of memory somewhere in the program. And this is declared by using this at symbol and the variable's name, in this case, num1. So just to run through the program, which I've run just one more time so it's clear, I've declared num1 and num2. As the program runs, we can see on the right-hand side here, value of num1 is 3, and it's at this address, 28FF18. The value of num2 is 6, and it's at the address, 28FF14. I've set and declared an integer pointer here to point to the address of num1, and num1 is also an integer, and I've said here, now print the value that's at, that's pointing, that pointed at by our pointer here, which obviously will be 3, as we can see here. I've then set it to the address of num2 and printed again, and it's now 6. And now I've changed here, in this line, line 22, at the address that our pointer is pointing to, whatever that may be, in this case it's the address of num2, to set the value there as 10. And now to demonstrate that that's now changed the value of num2, on line 24 I've then printed out the value of num2, which is now 10. OK, I hope that made a little bit of sense. As I said, it's not very complicated. You just need to have in your head that a pointer is pointing at an address of a variable. And it's looking at a size in the memory of whatever type has been defined.
for the pointer. OK, the next video will carry on looking at why are some applications of pointers and why we might actually need to use them. Until then, thanks very much for watching, taking the time, comments, criticisms are welcome as always on YouTube.